Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. We're going to be around the throne of God, Jennifer. You know, we're going to be able to sing a song that the angels can't sing, Brother Bill. Won't be any more problems, no more devil. No more more trials. Hallelujah, no more world. We'll be there forever. You know, and and the Lord is... is, uh, He's so good to us, like Christian said this morning. He's, he's so faithful to us all. And, and if we would have exacted, or in other words, if we would have gotten what we all should have gotten, you know, we'd all be in hell tonight. Amen. Brother Jesse, he looked down on us and he, he remembered his, his grace Amen. and his mercy and his love and his compassion. And he said they never fail. His, his mercies, they never fail. His compassions, they fail not. And I'm just thankful tonight little man, you know, I was thinking about Brother Jimmy Talley. I've always loved Jimmy. Tonight when he was telling me you saw him and, and the Lord spoke to me. And he did speak to me. He told me that the next time that I saw Jimmy Talley, which I did in the hospital a handful of months ago, he said, the Lord's coming. That's what he told me. I gave him the count before him. He said, my coming won't be long. Tonight I want to share something with you that I've never preached on, I've never talked about. I need the Lord's help tonight that I say what he wants me to say that I would present this in a way that the church would, would really consider uh, really what I believe, how close that we really are to the coming of the Lord. I know it's a whole lot closer today than it was yesterday, and it'll be a whole lot closer tomorrow. We stretch your hands this way. Holy Spirit, just use me tonight. Lord, you, you've, you've led me this way. You've led me this path tonight. And God, I'm asking you now to bless this word. I'm asking you, God, to allow me to, uh, to, to minister this word in the way that you would want me to minister. God, help me. Lord, I pray tonight that your parts of your people, God, would be open to your word. For, Father, we truly are living in the last days before the return of your Son. And, God, tonight I want to thank you for your word. And I want to thank you, God, for this word that you've given me tonight. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this service to encourage your people tonight. And the people of God said amen and amen. You may be seated. Without question, you can look around and not only do you see the signs that Jesus spoke of here in the book of Luke that I want to start with, but God said you would see them all happening at one particular time and one particular day. And this is the time, and I believe, Sister Iva, that this is the day that we live in. Jesus said in in, in Luke chapter 21, He said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for those things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. Here it is. Then said He unto them, Nations shall rise against nations. That's and if you want to study that in the Greek and Hebrew text, it means ethnos or ethnic group shall rise against ethnic group. He went on to say right here, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in divers places, which means all over the world, and famines and pestilence and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. So I wanted to start there, but I did, that's not where I wanted to stop. This is the text that I want to speak to you about tonight out of the book of Revelation. Now everybody listen to me. This is where we're going. I want to preach tonight on this particular passage of Scripture and my title, I want to title my message, Signs of the Final Beast. This is the word of the Lord to the church tonight. Signs of the Final Beast. Let me read what he said. Revelation chapter 13 beginning with verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Remember that word. He came... Out of the land. He didn't come out of the sea, but he came up out of the land, out of the earth. Look at somebody and say, the beast that came out of the earth. Look at them and tell them, the beast that came up out of the earth. 
And I beheld another beast come out of the earth. One text says, out of the land. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beasts before him. And causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast. Whose deadly wound was healed. And, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Look at verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now there's been something that, that I've been watching, that I've, that I've watched for months, that I've followed, that I've prayed about, and, and, and I, I, today and in, in the last few weeks, the Lord, and I know this is the way He deals with me as, as an individual, has, has been going back even yesterday as I sat down at my sister-in-law's house. Uh, my father-in-law even came up, and to me it was just another sign to me that God wanted me to minister this word. Now, what I'm saying to you tonight, I'm not saying that this man is the beast. But I am telling you tonight from the word of the Lord that without question, that this Pope that is now in office, that is now on the earth. And I'm going to tell you a few things tonight that I've never spoke of. I've never spoke of it in my ministry. I've never spoke of a Pope. I've never, uh, 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 I've never gone into such detail that God would have me go in tonight. But one of the things that I want you to realize is that there will be two. There will be one that will rise out of the sea and this other one that God spoke of, which I call the false prophet. The Bible said that he would rise up out of the land or out of the earth. Look at somebody and say amen. As I began to watch this Pope, I, I want to go back to some of the prophecy. This is not in the Scripture, but there was a prophecy given out by a Pope way back many years ago called St. Malachi. Has anybody heard about these prophecies? And St. Malachi began to prophesy all the way down into the last Pope that would be on planet Earth right before the Lord would come to rapture His church. If you believe it, I believe it. Say amen. The Bible is, 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 is right here. It's clear that there shall be a, a false prophet that will, what I call, will align himself with this other ruler that will come up out of the sea. The Bible talks about that he will use this system until the day that he will burn Rome, the city, the Bible says, which sits on the city, I'm sorry, which sits on seven hills, he will burn that place with fire. Now one of the first things that I want to share with you is what was said about this last pope by St. Malachi. There, there is the discrepancy that I will talk about, so, and there will be some things that I want to share with you tonight because I need to tell you these things. I'm the watchman on the wall. It's my responsibility to tell the church and to watch and, and to tell you what I feel like God would have me to tell you. Somebody say amen. It's an honor and a privilege tonight to get to preach the Word of God. He said when you preach the book of Revelation, it's the only book God said when you preach it that you'll receive a blessing from the Lord. And I believe that even me getting to preach it is such a great blessing. But Malachi talked about the last pope that would arise. Here's what he said about this last pope. He said, he called him Peter the Roman. Let me read what he said. He said, the last pope, the 112th pope, would be called Peter the Roman, who will pasture his sheep in many tribulations. And when these things are finished, the city of seven hills, that's even in the Bible, will be destroyed. And the Bible says it will be burned with fire. And the terrible judge, this, this, this uh, pope went on to say, will judge his people. Now, the first thing that I want to look at before I tell you some of the things that he has said is there's a discrepancy that this might not be the last pope. There's a discrepancy that this pope may be the 111th pope. 
But my point is, without question, we are seeing the signs that are just like God said that we would see. Are you listening to this preacher? We are seeing the signs of this final beast, this, this final world system coming into play. My God, you ought to shout because we're getting ready to go out. Amen. We're seeing this system systematically to be put in place. Here is the discrepancy. John Paul I, who was one of the first pope, I mean one of the popes, uh, he was actually, they said he was the 110th pope. And then they counted John Paul II, some did, as the 111th pope. You remember, or I'm sorry, the 109th, the 110th, I apologize. The 111th was the one that St. Benedict who just left. He was called the glory of the olive. He was the 111th pope. He resigned. Remember, automatically he just up and resigned, which has never been done in 600 years. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in here? Y'all looking at me like I just got off the bus. Well, here it is. The discrepancy is, is that John Paul I and John Paul II they look at them as having one pope. There was only, they look at them not as individuals, but as having one rule because John Paul I only lasted for three months. He died, and then John Paul II took over. So there's been some discrepancies. But there is a very good possibility that we are seeing, and this man could be, I'm not saying he is, but that he could be this final ruler, this final pope, that has been spoken of not only by this particular prophet, but as God spoke of the last days that the false prophet and the Antichrist would arise and then the end should come. Somebody say amen. amen. But let me, let me share some of the things that, that, that he has done. First of all, I want to speak to you about his name. Very unusual. The Bible talks about that there would be a world ruler that would rise up out of the land. Many Bible prophecies and scholars believe they say that this one of these beasts would rise up out of Europe. Perry Stone believes that the Antichrist will be an Islamic Antichrist. Whether he is or not, I don't know. But I do know that the Antichrist and the false prophet will arise and they will begin to work in unison together. We're living in the season before the rapture of the church. We know that and we're seeing these things come to pass. Listen to me. But what I thought was very funny is that this particular pope who came out of Argentina, he decided that he would name himself Pope Francis I. Now listen. Now we talked about the Eastern European Empire. We talked about Rome. We talked about the last days. He said, God said there would be ten nations that would give their power under the beast. And through this system, which is a religious system that would be set up, that's what he's talking about. There would be power given to the Antichrist. He would not only have political power, but then he would also have what I call spiritual power. He would have power over everything because the devil, he wants to rule over everybody and over everything. He will use this system, this religious system, system. He will use this system until he destroys it and he'll burn it with fire. Somebody say amen. But he took this name, listen to me, Pope Francis I. Now listen, the word Francis means, listen to me, the word Francis means the man from France. Where is France? France is in Western Europe, which is part of of the European Empire. Let me go on. Secondly, the Bible said that, that he would rise out of the land. The Bible says that he would come up and he would, he would speak. Though he looked like a lamb, he would have the mouth of a dragon. Now, now, let me tell you what that means. Now, the Pope himself, he looks the part. Listen to me. He looks the part and he plays the part. He looks like he's a religious man. He, he, he looks like he's a good man. He, 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 you know, he does all the right things, he say, but here's the key, but he doesn't say all the right things. This is what I want to show you. Now listen to me. I also want to share one more thing. The Lord quickened me. I forgot to tell you. He, this particular place in Western Europe that, that, that this name comes from is the largest landmass in Western Europe. And here's something else that I thought about. Just bear with me, Okay. Satan never wanted to be second. Satan never wanted to bow to God. Satan never wanted to be second to anybody. And I thought it was funny that this Pope would choose the name 
Pope Francis 